Hi everyone, it's Matt from The Pen Habit, and I'm really excited about showing you this pen. So today's pen is, is one of my, what I'm calling three times a year, big pen purchases. And uh, so I get one for my birthday in July, one for my bonus, when I get, I get my work bonus in September, if we get a bonus, and then one for Christmas slash New Year's. And uh, I'm recording this just a little before Christmas in 2014. And that's why I got this. Please allow me to stroke the box of my new favorite pen. This is the box for the Omas Ogiva Celluloid in Brown Arco. And uh, there's a lot of words there. I'll show you what that means. But this is the box that comes in. Open it up. And you get this very large, very lovely case here. The, I'm going to zoom out. You'll get to see a lot of my junk here on the, pull this off. And on the inside, uh, there's a space for an ink bottle, which I have taken out. Come, the pen comes in this little pen sleeve and sits right here. And then there's the booklet underneath with the warranty card and the like. So very nice presentation box. But for a pen this nice and for a pen this expensive, you would expect a fairly nice box. Now, this is a limited edition pen. Um, it only has, I can tell you here in just a moment, only has 527 uh, pens made in this particular series, and I have number 239. So I purchased this pen from Chatterley Luxuries and Bryant Greer at Chatterley Luxuries slash Pen Time. Uh, I've, I've purchased from him before, great service, very fast shipping. I, uh, I recommend him, and no, they're not paying me. I just really, uh, I like the service I've gotten from them on this pen. And uh, I also got my other favorite pen, my Visconti Divina Elegance in blue from, uh, from Bryant at Chatterley. All right, so this, this is my baby right here. This is the Omas Ogiva celluloid with the brown Arco celluloid that is kind of a trademark of Omas pens. And this material, every review I've ever seen of the Omas Brown Arco Celluloid has just, has just glowed about how stunning the material is. And they've talked about how pictures don't do it justice. Uh, let me add my voice to that, uh, to that and say that their photos and videos simply cannot do this pen justice. It is a beautiful material. Standard torpedo slash, slash cigar-shaped pen. Uh, nice gold-plated cap here. It's a fairly tight cap, but not so tight it can't be usable. Got the little roller on the end. You've got your nice Greek-style design around the band at the bottom of the cap. And a band here for the piston filler knob at the end of the pen. Pull this out. And the brown arcocelluloid continues all the way down to the end here. And we've got this lovely, uh, just really lovely thing. Now, in terms, of, in terms of the grip, the only thing I don't love about this pen is where they decided to put the threads. Why they decided putting the threads right where you would grip the pen would be a good idea is completely and totally beyond me. That being said, these threads are not super deep, so it doesn't, it doesn't bother me at all. But what makes this pen extra special for me is this nib. So I have, prior to this, I had one other Omas pen. It was my Omas Noti di Bologna. Um, beautiful pen, that orange and dark blue swirled uh, resin. The nib is, is a, it's a rigid nib but just as smooth as silk. I mean, it's just as smooth as smooth can be. Um, but that's, in terms of my experience with Omas nibs, really that's the only other nib that I've had a chance to play around with. The nib on this, uh, this lovely celluloid Ogiva, it's a 14 karat gold nib, and it's, it's a decent size nib. It's actually quite a large nib. But this is one of their extra flexibile nibs. Uh, so this is basically as close to a modern flex nib as I have ever seen. Um, it really is a lovely, lovely nib. 
Uh, it comes in, I, I believe the extra flexibile come in extra fine and fine. I don't know if they come in medium or broad. I got the fine um, because extra fine is generally just a little too, too small for me. At, now that I've used the pen, and I'll show you this in the writing sample, I think I actually would have preferred the extra fine, but I'm totally cool with this nib. It's a beautiful writer. I've done nothing to it. Lovely, bouncy quality, uh, very nice, and I, I'd call it a a medium flex. It's certainly not a super flex, and it's a little bit more than a semi flex for me. Um, it kind of falls in between that semi flex and full flex uh, range in the pens. But man, is it a beauty to write with, and it's a beauty to look at, and it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous pen. So I think I like it. <laughs> let's let's go over the stats. So the, the pen is 149 millimeters in length, which is a fairly long pen. It is 132 millimeters when it is uncapped, so it's very easy to write without having capped it um, and, or with, without posting it. Um, and with this material being as beautiful as it is, I would be really hesitant to post this pen. The pen can be posted and it fits fairly securely and it's light enough that it doesn't feel back heavy. It's a little, it's a little unwieldy, but it's really not bad. So if you're a poster, uh, you could totally post your pen and, and write with it comfortably. Uh, it's, as I mentioned, a light pen. It's only 14 grams uncapped and 22 grams capped or posted, and that's with ink. And this is a piston filler, so it holds a decent amount of ink in there. Uh, in terms of the widths, you are looking at about 11.9 millimeters, so a good hefty grip right here, right where the threads are, which is right where I hold the pen. The pen, the threads sit right on my fingers when I hold the pen, but that's just shy of 12 millimeters. The barrel, you're looking at 13.3, and the widest part of the cap, you're looking at 14.7. So all in all, this is really a lovely, lovely pen. It writes as good as it looks. So let's, <laughs> let me stop talking now and let's go do a writing sample with this lovely pen. Okay, so we have the Omos Ogiva Celluloid in brown Arco. The nib is a 14 carat extra flexibile, which is, is, would make sense, Italian for flexible, fine. The ink is one of my favorites. It's Honoré de Balzac, Dandy Turquoise. And the paper is an 80 gram Rhodia dot pad, as it always is for my reviews. So, if you can't tell just from this already, there's some, there's some bounce to it. But before I talk too much more, let me go ahead and do the quote. Okay, this is just such a lovely writing experience. I mean, I can't, I don't want to oversell it, but it's really a stunning writing experience. Probably the closest thing, uh, the other pen I have that comes close to this writing experience is, uh, is my, my vintage Waterman, uh, my Waterman 7. 
just a beautiful nib on this pen. Now, it's a little more feedbacky than I generally tend to like, but it's such a wet nib that doesn't really bother me. And let me show you what I mean by a uh, wet nib here. I mean, you can see it as the ink pools, but this is a wet nib. Um, now, what everyone's really interested in seeing. So, here is... It's really, it's a lovely nib. Nice variation between the lightest and the, the heaviest. Now, this is probably a bit more pressure than I would normally put on the pen, but there, there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of, uh, of give to this nib. It's really lovely flex nib. This is, in my opinion, a modern flex nib. It's the closest thing I have tried in any modern pen to an honest-to-goodness flex nib. And along those lines, I have had nary a problem with the pen choking up, with the feed being unable to keep up. It just does, it's, it's been really, really wonderful in every single aspect of the pen. I find myself at work trying to come up with excuses to pull this out and write something down because I just, first of all, I love to look at it. But second of all, it just writes so, so wonderfully. Um, I do get just a little bit of a hard start um, after I have been flexing. Um, you know, sometimes the ink will just crap out on me just a tiny little bit. Um, but I'm also probably running a little bit low on ink because I've been using it so much lately. Um, but that is really a, a, a very, very minor thing and will probably be fixed the next time I clean it out and re-ink it. So, um, oh yeah, the, uh, the reverse writing, it works. It's okay. Very fine line. Now, I mentioned that if I had to do this over again, I would probably get the extra flexible as opposed to, or the extra fine instead of the, uh, the fine. Uh, the reason for that being is the fine, because this nib bounces so much, just in the course of regular writing, uh, it, it ends up being more like a medium line than a fine line. If you, if you go out of your way not to put any pressure It can kind of go fine, but the way I write, I mean, I don't put lots of pressure on my nib, but I do get a little bit of a bounce naturally to my writing. And so, it ends up being more like a medium. So, if I were to do this over again, and I, and, and, you know, God willing, I will do this over again, maybe with the, uh, the Ojiva Alba that's over at Goulet right now. Um, if, I, uh, if I'm able to do that, if I'm able to get another one of these, I'll probably get the extra fine nib instead of the fine extra flexibile. So, in summary, in case you couldn't tell, I heart this pen. I love the way it looks. I love the way it writes. I love the way it feels in my hand. I do not particularly love the price. It was, it was very expensive. But if you're in the mood for a high-end pen, this one is one you should consider. This brown Arco celluloid from Omos is just stunning. The, the way I, I had a coworker put it, he said, it looks like the pen is lit from the inside. And that's probably the best description I can give you of the way it looks in the light. It's just a stunningly, stunningly beautiful pen. Well, if you have any questions, please head over to penhabit.com to join the conversation there. Share, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Thank you again for watching, and we will see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Bye.